And Ted has flown Ron here from Ottawa, where Jifen is located, because not only did Jifen find SARS early, but you may have seen last week that Iran announced that they had bird flu in Iran. But Jifen found the bird flu in Iran, not February 14th, but last September. We need an early warning system to protect us against the things that are humanity's worst nightmare. And so my TED wish is based on the common denominator of these experiences, smallpox, early detection, early response, blindness, polio, early detection, early response, pandemic bird flu, early detection, early response. It is a litany. It is so obvious that our only way of dealing with these new diseases is to find them early and to kill them before they spread. So my TED wish is for you to help build a global system, an early warning system, to protect us against humanity's worst nightmares. And what I thought I would call it is early detection. But it should really be called total early detection. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> but in all seriousness, because this idea is birthed in TED, I would like it to be a legacy of TED, and I'd like to call it the International System for Total Early Disease Detection. And instead, then becomes our mantra. So instead of a hidden pandemic of bird flu, we find it and immediately contain it. Instead of a novel virus caused by bioterror or bioerror or shift or drift, we find it and we contain it. Instead of industrial accidents like oil spills or the catastrophe in Bhopal, we find them and we respond to them. Instead of famine hidden until it is too late, we detect it and we respond. And instead of a system which is owned by a government and hidden in the bowels of government, let's build an early detection system that's freely available to anyone in the world in their own language. Let's make it transparent, non-governmental, not owned by any single country or company, housed in a neutral country with redundant backup in a different time zone and a different continent. And let's build it on GFIN. Let's start with GFIN. Let's increase the websites that they crawl from 20,000 to 20 million. Let's increase the languages they crawl from 7 to 70 or more. Let's build in outbound confirmation messages using text messages or SMS or instant messaging to find out from people who are within 100 meters of the rumor that you hear if it is in fact valid. And let's add satellite confirmation and we'll add Gapminder's amazing graphics to the front end and we'll grow it as a moral force in the world finding out those terrible things before anybody else knows about them and sending our response to them. So that next year, instead of us meeting here lamenting how many terrible things there are in the world, we will have pulled together, used the unique skills and the magic of this community and be proud that we have done everything we can to stop pandemics, other catastrophes, and change the world beginning right now. So, an amazing presentation. First of all, just so everyone understands, you are saying that by, build, by creating web crawlers, looking on the internet for patterns, we could, they can detect something suspicious before WHO, before anyone else can see it. Just explain, give an example of how that could possibly be true. First of all, you're not mad about the copyright violation. No, I love it. <laughs> Well, you know, as Ron St. John, I hope you'll go and meet him in the dinner afterwards and talk to him. 
When he started GFIN, in, in 1997, there was an outbreak of bird flu, H5N1. It was in Hong Kong. And a remarkable doctor in Hong Kong responded immediately by slaughtering 1.5 million chickens and birds, and they stopped that outbreak in its tracks. Immediate detection, immediate response. Then a number of years went by, and there were a lot of rumors about bird flu. Ron and his team in Ottawa began to crawl the web, only crawling 20,000 different websites, mostly periodicals. And they read about and heard about a concern of a lot of children who had high fever and symptoms of bird flu. They reported this to WHO. WHO took a little while taking action, because WHO will only receive a report from a government, because it's the United Nations. But they were able to point to WHO and let them know that there was this surprising and unexplained cluster of illnesses that looked like bird flu. That turned out to be SARS. That's how the world found out about SARS. And because of that, we were able to stop SARS. Now, what's really important is that before there was GFIN, 100% of all the world's reports of bad things, whether you're talking about famine or you're talking about bird flu or you're talking about Ebola, 100% of all those reports came from nations. The moment these guys in Ottawa, on a budget of $800,000 a year, got cracking, 75% of all the reports in the world came from GFIN, 25% of all the reports in the world came from all the other 180 nations. Now, here's what's real interesting. After they'd been working for a couple years, what do you think happened to those nations? They felt pretty stupid. So they started sending in their reports early, and now their reporting percentage is down to 50% because other nations have started to report. So can you find diseases early by crawling the web? Of course you can. Can you find them even earlier than GFIN does now? Of course you can. You saw that they found SARS using their Chinese web crawler a full six weeks before they found it using their English web crawler. Well, they're only crawling in seven languages. These bad viruses really don't have any intention of showing up first in English or Spanish or French. <laughs> So, yes, I want to take GFIN, I want to build on it, I want to add all the languages of the world that we possibly can, I want to make this open to everybody so that the health officer in Nairobi or in Patna, Bihar will have as much access to it as the folks in Ottawa or in CDC, and I want to make it part of our culture that there is a community of people who are watching out for the worst nightmares of humanity and that it's accessible to everyone.